Okay, so let's prepare for a little bit of a ramble, shall we? I want to talk today about privacy. Now, if you've followed the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm not the biggest privacy person out there. Like, for the most part, I don't talk about privacy very much on the channel at all, even when it comes to how that privacy plays with FOSS software and all that stuff. Like, a lot of people, a lot of FOSS advocates tout that privacy is one of the main reasons why you should use open source software. And I've never been that guy, you know? For me, open source software means other things, like freedom to do what I want with it, and the ability to tweak it however I want, you know, those kind of things. Not necessarily that those applications are the most private, because for the most part, privacy just isn't that important to me, at least when it comes to my data. And there are several reasons for this, so let's just explain some of the reasons why I feel the way I do about privacy. For my main job, I'm an editor for a historical magazine, and that's not always the case. I was a writer for the same historical magazine. I've been promoted since, but for the most part, all the writing and editing that I do now, unfortunately, has to be done in Google Docs, which means that I have a Google account. And I've been using Gmail for I, since it was in beta. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been using Gmail, so I, I'm a big user, unfortunately, of Google services. I used Android for a long time. So when it comes to privacy, the way I feel about it mostly some comes down to the fact that I think that that ship has sailed. Like, I'm pretty sure Google already knows everything about me, so protecting myself from that seems like shutting the barn door after the horses have already gone out of the barn. So... That's the, one of the reasons why I, I feel the way I do about privacy. So the question remains is, should you care about privacy? And the answer to that question is, I think yes. And the reason why I say that isn't because I necessarily think that you should stop using Google services. I know a lot of open source advocates say never use a Google service. And in an ideal world, sure, stop using Google services. Use NextCloud. Uh, use DuckDuckGo, whatever open source slash privacy respecting service that you want to use. I think that that's a, a great plan for those of you who can do it. But I also think that those people who preach that and get upset when other people say never use that I have to use Google, I, th I think that those people are a, a little bit naive because a lot of people who have jobs can't avoid Google. They just can't, you know? Same thing like with Microsoft. A lot of people work in companies that use Microsoft and they have to use things like Edge and uh, SharePoint and all this stuff that you have to use in order to do business, you know? So oftentimes, avoiding the major evil corporations out there is just impossible. For example, I mean, a big example is... Uh, mobile technology. Like, if you want to use a mobile phone these days, you're going to end up using a phone that is developed by a company that's probably not going to respect your privacy. It's just a, a sad truth. You're either going to use an Apple device or you're going to use one based on Android. Now, there are other options out there. There are, but they're not mainstream. They all have their flaws. If you want a really good experience, one that deals well with maybe your corporate infrastructure or whatever, you're going to have to use the main, you know, two of the ma the two main operating systems. And that's going to cause you to compromise on your privacy. So I really do think that the people who preach about privacy sometimes don't take into account the reality of life that sometimes you just can't avoid using Google or Microsoft or Apple or whatever. And that's kind of where I'm at is that I just can't avoid it, right? And because I can't avoid it, I oftentimes find myself just using Google to search things. Because whether you like it or not, Google is the best search engine. It just is. They have the most data. They stole it from all of us down and they know how to use it. Not only to make their advertisements, but to make good search results. And they do a good job on that. I've tried using DuckDuckGo for my search engine. It's not great. Like, half the time I end up going back to Google and doing the search over again. It's basically a waste of time. That doesn't mean DuckDuckGo can't deliver good search results, but it's not as good as Google. I've tried Brave Search. Same problems there. So, it's not as if I haven't tried to do those things, but maybe if I had... Maybe if I was in a position to never use Google again and could try to, you know, actually care about privacy, then I would suffer through DuckDuckGo more. 
But because I have to use Google anyways, I figure I might as well just use the Google search and get good search results. So those are my views on privacy. For everyone else, if you can avoid Google, you probably should. There are good options out there. They're not as good as what Google offers, sadly, in a lot of cases. Now, I think things like Next, Next Cloud are close, and DuckDuckGo is a is it it's fine. You'll probably still end up using Google sometimes, but for most people, eventually you'll find what you're searching for. And, and the thing about it is, is that you should care about your privacy as much as you are able to. But you have to be realistic and realize that in some cases, you're just not going to be able to not use the services that aren't respecting of your privacy. It's just sometimes you're not going to be able to do that, whether that's because of work or whatever. So but what's the bottom line? The bo I think at the end of the day, privacy does matter, but not in that it is the be all end all of everything, but more that what really matters when it comes to privacy is that you're aware of what's going on. Like it, as long as you know that by using Google services, you're, you're basically giving them your data. As long as you are a consenting party in that transaction, you are okay, right? As long as you are someone who is fully aware of the transaction that is taking place between you and whatever service you're using, then that is an, an appropriate thing to do. It's when you are, it's when the service takes things from you that you aren't aware of that it becomes a problem. So things like the whole audacity thing, like when they were trying to t enable telemetry and stuff like that, it came across as shady, not necessarily because telemetry is bad, but because they were moving from a situation where they weren't taking any data to a situation where they were, looks like they were going to take a whole bunch of data, you know, and that seemed a little shady. So my thoughts are that as long as you are a, in a, in a responsible internet user and you, you understand that everything you do online usually comes with some sort of transaction between you and the website you're visiting. That's usually the case. And as long as you're aware of that and what that transaction entails and you consent to that transaction, you are, are fine. That's why open source software is so good because not this that open source software is necessarily the most private. I don't agree with that. A lot of open source so projects collect telemetry. Like Ubuntu and KDE, they all collect telemetry. You have to turn it on and whatever. But they all do this kind of stuff, right? So open source software doesn't necessarily equate to private. It just doesn't. But what open source software does is it, it allows you to have a transparency layer between you and that other end of the, the transaction. Whereas that tra that transparency layer doesn't really exist between you and Google or me and Google. You know, I don't really know exactly not only what data are they taking, but also what they do with that data. I mean, we have a pretty good idea, but we don't know that they're not doing something even more nefarious than what we suspect they're doing, you know? Whereas with open source software, it, it, if they are going to take data from you, which is usually an opt-in process, there's still going to be some level of transparency towards what they're doing with that data. And that's where open source software shines. So I think for a New Year's resolution, I'm going to try to cut out as much Google from my life as I can. Unfortunately, as I said at the beginning of the, the, the video, for work, I'm not going to be able to do that. But f as I was rambling on, I think you probably got this the sense of that a lot of times I just fell into using Google because I already used Google, like the whole horse analogy. Like I've already given them all of this data, so I might as well just continue to use Google because it's the best. And I think that that mentality is not great, right? It's, it's something that I need to fix about myself. So in the new year, I'm switching all of my search engines to DuckDuckGo or Brave. I haven't decided yet. It's going to be one of those two. It's going to depend on which one pisses me off less, I guess. And I'm also going to start using Nextcloud as much as possible because maybe uh, if I can get used to Nextcloud, I can prompt my employer to switch to Nextcloud. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I doubt that that's going to happen, but you never know. So uh, this was kind of a, a long rambly video to talk a, to a, a, talk a little bit about my New Year's resolution in terms of trying to become a little bit more private. And um, we'll see how it goes. 
Uh, I will probably make some videos throughout the year because I know that I, I want to do a browser comparison uh, video between like DuckDuckGo, Google, and Brave and see how they do because I talk to a lot of DuckDuckGo users and they're like, oh, DuckDuckGo is great. It's fantastic. What are you talking about? And every time I go to DuckDuckGo, I was like, I need to go to Google. Go to Google. Maybe I have an obsession or an addiction or something to Google. Maybe that's the possibility and it's just me. I don't know. Anyway, so that is it for this video. It was, like I said, it was a rambly video. It's just the nature of this video. So that's just the way it goes. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can leave a comment in the comment section below if you have thoughts on privacy and FOSS software and all that kind of stuff. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson Tool, Steve A, CyberGuy Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Dated, Sean, Jeremy, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, The BCs Rock, Peter A, and Crucible. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.